All right. Bonjour, Argonauts. <laughs> What's going on? We're here to talk about scaling cloud native CI CD pipelines with Jenkins and Argo. Um, and last ArgoCon, Bertrand and I presented on how to migrate from Jenkins to Argo for CI and some of the pros and cons of using Jenkins and Argo on Kubernetes. And today we're going to go a level deeper, um, talk a bit more about scaling both Jenkins and Argo um, driven CI CD pipelines. My name's Kalen. I'm co founder and CEO at Pipekit where we're maintainers on the Argo Workflows project. I've been a contributor since 2021 on the project. And what we do is provide a control plane for Argo Workflows for teams that want to provide self-serve workflows. And we also provide enterprise support. So you'll find us in the community uh, Slack on GitHub. And don't be shy. Feel free to say hi. Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Bertrand. I'm a staff software engineer at Intuit. Um, <clears throat> I've been working on uh, cloud native and distributed system for about 20 years. I've joined Intuit about a year and a half ago as a member of the CI CD team. My mission was to evaluate alternatives to Jenkins, uh, such as uh, GitHub Actions or Argo Workflows uh, for our next generation uh, platform. So today, the goals for this talk is first, we're going to go over the uh, challenges of running Jenkins on top of Kubernetes. Uh, then we'll see an example of uh, an end-to-end CI-CD pipeline, uh, first using a hybrid strategy between uh, Jenkins and Argo CD, followed by an Argo-only solution. And finally, we'll give you some tips and tricks on how to run those CI-CD pipelines and how to migrate from uh, Jenkins to Argo workflows. Um, first, a few words of introduction about Intuit. So Intuit is a financial software company. Uh, you may have heard or even used some of our products, such as TurboTax, QuickBooks, and Credit Karma. Maybe not so much in Europe, but in, in the US probably. Um, our core mission is really to empower our customers to make the best financial decisions using our AI-driven platform. Um, a quick look at the uh, CI-CD landscape at Intuit. So we are serving about 6,000 developers running 100,000 uh, builds uh, daily. And in order to support this, we are running a Kubernetes cluster with about like 150 nodes uh, with 200 Jenkins controllers. And based on the load, at a given point in time, we're ranging between 1,000 to 1,500 uh, Jenkins build agents. So uh, we've been very successful with Jenkins so far. However, it has its challenges. So let's go over some of them. Um, the first one is the, the, the major feedback we get from our customers, the difficulty of navigating the UI, uh, especially when your build is failing. Uh, then uh, we're running the uh, open source version of Jenkins. It doesn't come with like disaster recovery or high availability features. Uh, so even though we have implemented our own uh, custom solution, sometimes it can take up to an hour to um, fade over some uh, bigger Jenkins controller, which uh, exceeds our SLAs. Um, then the, the challenge of running uh, Jenkins um, at scale, uh, especially the lack of a unifying control plane is something uh, that basically makes deploying a new version of the plugins uh, very tedious or new running out inversion of Jenkins, very tedious. <clears throat> Sorry. And then we have the fact that uh, Jenkins is not cloud native. So we kind of lock in that execution model where you have one build uh, agent and a pod with all these container running for the full duration of the build. And uh, even if it's doing nothing, wasting your cluster resources. Um, now let's have a look at a typical Jenkins CI-CD pipeline at uh, Intuit. So we won't go over the CI part of it as we already covered this in our previous talk, but we'll focus on the uh, CD part of it. And uh, the first thing, uh, those two steps, so you have like uh, the random manifest. So the CI part of it is like first you build a Docker image and you publish it to some Docker registry, and then the CD part of it is typically rendering some Kubernetes manifests and then trigger a deployment from them. Uh, let me show you how it looks like in more details. 
So I intuit for each uh, code repository, we have an associated like deployment repository. Uh, the deployment repository is structured as follows. So you have like the main branch, which holds all the templated Kubernetes resources. Uh, we use customize to to customize, sorry, to customize yes, those resources. And then for each environment, let's say dev, QA, prod, we have a corresponding branch, which will hold the rendered manifest uh, for that environment. So the way we're using uh, this is uh, when we render the manifest, we usually update the Kubernetes uh, resources with a new image tag or whatever we need uh, for that environment. And then we commit this uh, to the target branch for that environment. So this is where GitOps uh, shines. Uh, we actually are able to track all the changes and we know exactly what and when uh, a deployment has been triggered, uh, thanks to that. And finally, in order to trigger the deployment, we are using the, um, an, for each environment, we have a corresponding Argo CD uh, application and we're using the Argo CLI to synchronize that application which will basically read from that branch and it will proceed to the, uh, to the deployment of your application. And uh, the actual deployment of the application, oops, yeah, no worries, yeah, thanks. So for the, the actual deployment of the application, we're using Argo rollouts. Um, this, so this has been a key uh, game changer for our deployment strategy. And I wanted to highlight today uh, two key aspects of Argo rollouts, which are the progressive delivery and the automated analysis and uh, rollback. Um, for the uh, progressive delivery, so Argo rollout supports multiple deployment strategies, uh, including like blue green, canary, and uh, rolling updates. We're using canary deployment side into it for all our services. And the, the idea uh, for those who are not familiar with that is like you can have basically can gradually instantiate, sorry, instantiate the new version of your service and route some traffic over to that uh, service. And if everything is successful, uh, you can like uh, instruct, uh, sorry, algo rollouts to, to move forward. And the way it works, and this is the second point, is like it has an automated analysis and rollback feature. So you can provide uh, two algo rollouts uh, some metrics. Uh, we support a large, large number of uh, metrics providers, but we're using, in that case, for instance, Prometheus with an HTTP success rate, but can be something else. And it will instruct Argo rollouts. If everything is okay with the deployment, then it will move on and deploy more and more um, pods for your service and up to and route more and more traffic to this. And luckily, uh, you have the service fully deployed. However, if there's any issues with the deployment, with a new version of the service, it can automatically roll back to the previous stable version without having any human interaction, and which is great. So uh, this is what we use um, for all our services at Intuit. And this has been a, a, a game changer, as in we, we don't leave anything to luck, and we, we have a full control and confidence over our deployments using this. Um, Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the last thing I would, uh, would like to um, uh, talk about is that um, some other uh, colleagues at Intuit are working on the open source project, the NUMA project, which is a, an ML um, pipeline uh, engine, if you will. Um, and they, they kind of like prototype an integration uh, to Argo rollouts. So, uh, in the um, previous example, we were using the HTTP success rate, which is a very simple example. But you probably have like complex applications with like dozens or hundreds of metrics, right? And uh, how do you how do you make sure that you can actually compute um, an actual like health score for for your service that is uh, meaningful uh, when you deploy your application? This is exactly what they've done with uh, Numa Project, so Numa Flow and Numa Logic. What they did is like they use an ML model to basically compute all those metrics like HTTP success rates, error rates, lat latency, uh, throughput, like you name it, like could be application uh, level metrics as well. And they were able to, um, out of those metrics, compute a score, if you will. 
uh, uh, thanks to the model. And this is what they used uh, as a metric for the Argo rollout deployments. And this is something that we call like AI ops at, at, at Intuit. And we are in the process of deploying that strategy for all our services. So it's, uh, it's uh, in progress. I strongly encourage you to have a look at the talk that has been given like uh, at KubeCon 2022, uh, where they go over this. And I think I'm done. I'm going to hand it over now to Kellen, which will uh, Thank you. take over. Yeah, I'll jump in now to more of the PipeKit use cases and some of the other scalability uh, considerations we can share with you. Um, so at PipeKit, we migrated off Jenkins for our CI to Argo workflows a bit while ago. And so now we're just going to take a look at an example pipeline um, and, a, and a demo for you to understand how we use Argo workflows, Argo CD, and Argo rollouts in our end-to-end -end CI CD pipeline. So this is a simple example here where we have a Git checkout. We'll then be bu building a container, publishing it, and then deploying with Argo CD and doing a canary deployment with Argo rollouts. And this example is built to be ran um, anywhere you'd like. Um, you can run it locally, so you can check that out here on GitHub. Um, it's our free Argo CI CD pipeline example. Um, and I'll jump into that now in just a, a quick demo of how that works. Um, so what we have here is we're just going to submit um, an Argo workflow that triggers a deployment incorporating Argo rollouts. Um, and what this is going to do is spin up Argo workflows here. Um, so here's our workflow. Um, and it runs through the, the Git checkout. It's going to build the container um, and uh, deploy that on Argo CD um, with the new image. That will then replace the existing app we had deployed already. So we can see now we have Argo CD um, running now and kicking off the initial deployment. And this here is our uh, deploy manifest. So this is written as a, a workflow template that we have. Um, and one of the, the steps here is a Argo rollout. So we can see here deploying our resources. And um, this is where we defined our, our canary deployment settings. So we have five stages to that. And we're just rolling it out every 10 seconds if our metric, metrics are looking good. So. Again, this is just kind of an example. We might actually run this slower in production, but for the purposes of the demo, we ran it just every 10 seconds. And so we can swap back. And as the pipeline progresses here, sorry, things are a bit slow. Um, we will wait and see Argo rollouts come online and uh, push the canaries live here. So now it's deploying. And this is all in an Argo workflow. And when we hop back here, we see now our canaries are starting to, to come online and, and gradually um, roll out. So this just shows you, I think, a, a quick end-to-end -end example of how you can use a workflow to trigger Argo CD and then eventually a rollout um, over you know, any span of time that you set if you want to use a canary deployment. Um, now we'll hop into. Um, some, some considerations of how to scale up your CI CD pipeline with Argo. Um, the first is maybe why you might consider using Argo workflows for your CI. Um, and the big reason is that one step, one pod principle. Um, and that really then enables you to odd scale faster, run parallelism by default. Um, and the big advantage that we saw is, you know, then we can scale CI to the limit of our Kubernetes cluster rather than the rough limit that we were hitting with Jenkins of around 5,000 jobs per Jenkins controller. So it's, it's enabled a lot more scalability for, for ourselves and for our customers on our CI, and we can run CI jobs faster as a result. Um, given, yeah, things dynamically are provisioned, if, if there's a human in the loop in that CI pipeline, we don't have to hold resources until um, you know, they approve something to continue or we're waiting for a long step to run, um, we can just scale up step by step, which has been a, a big advantage in cost savings and actually reduced our CI costs by 90% because we, we stopped um, holding any resources like we were with Jenkins and just auto-scaling those on Kubernetes with Argo. 
Um, the other big benefit is since everything is in one pod, every step is in one pod, you can take advantage of spot nodes, and that was a, a big factor in our cost savings. And Argo has a very handy retry uh, framework available as a native feature. So um, you can you know, quickly retry uh, any step in your CI pipeline if uh, that spot node you know, gets killed by, by your cloud provider. Um, another thing I'll mention is just parallelism by default is a nice, really nice native feature in Argo workflows that um, in Jenkins we had to define. And so using DAG templates on the Argo side, we're able to just run any step automatically that doesn't have a declared dependency. So that's very handy for just spinning up um, parallel tests, running them as quick as you can, and then continuing on in the pipeline. Um, Another thing, as we saw, is it's pretty seamless to integrate with Argo CD and rollouts. You can create workflow templates that different Argo workflow pipelines can call depending on parameters. Um, and so it really makes you, it gives you the ability to remix and, and match your pipelines to the use case that you want without having to write everything from scratch each time. And the last thing that we find a benefit in is if uh, customers are a Python shop, um, there is a way to write your workflows in Python as well. Um, you're not using a, you know, a CI specific language like Groovy. We're using YAML, um, which is you know, what we're using for all of our other infrastructure, or you're using Python um, through the Hera SDK. Um, next, we'll dive into some scaling strategies and tips. So these fall into two categories. The first is work avoidance, and the next is actually testing your pipeline before promoting it to production. On the work avoidance side, um, there's a couple of tips that we have. The first is quite obvious, but you know, cache your images. <laughs> that's, that's a good thing to do. We unfortunately run into a lot of teams that kind of delay that, um, you know, that step. It's just forever on the to-do list. And, are wondering why their CI pipelines take a long time still after migrating, and this is really what um, we find has the biggest impact on their, their pipeline speed after they've gotten onto Argo. We use Spagel as a tool, so you're welcome to check that out, but you know, we just recommend caching with whatever tool works with your cloud provider the best. The second tip, as far as avoiding work, is to use the native memoization features that Argo has. Um, if you're going to rerun a pipeline, you want to be able to just reuse any steps that ran and didn't change, and that's what memoization does for you. Um, and what's great is a colleague of mine, Alan, uh, and maintainer on the Argo Workflows project, did a talk on this with another maintainer from Intuit, uh, Julie Vogelman, and they talked in detail about how you can use memoization for your workflows. Um, it works great for any data that's less than a megabyte. Um, so it can, can help you speed up pipelines. And then there's additional strategies to use if, if you know, a step is larger than that. So I recommend checking out that talk from the last ArgoCon. Um, and then the last work avoidance uh, tip we have is thinking about, okay, how do, if, if you have CI and you're running it on commits, which is what we do, every commit is gonna trigger a job, think about how do you, you know, kill duplicative jobs if CI is still running for, say, a five, seven minute job and you forgot something, you're pushing another commit, you might not wanna keep running that old CI job. So there is a way to use config maps to track runs and enforce a certain logic on what runs of your workflows are kept live. Um, we use the latest job logic, so on that latest commit, that, that run of the workflow takes, pre takes precedence. Um, but you can also flip that around and use it for the, you know, only the first job takes precedence. Um, and the way that works is um, taking a look here at, let's see, this workflow here. Um, so this is just a, a quick example of how you might do that. Um, it's, it's basically done by just adding a simple template early on in your job that's creating a config map and naming that config map as your workflow with a parameter here. Um, and then just having some quick logic here that says, okay, if that config map ex exists, uh, let's kill the prior job with kubectl. And if not, we'll create the config map so that if we need to run the job again, we know and we don't have to rework that or rerun that job and use, the re use those resources again. Um, again, like I said, you can flip that on its head and flip the if, if logic around. If you want to maybe say, keep a job live, um, we have some customers that maybe are deploying an app, a streaming app, and you might want to um, keep that stream job live in case someone 
uh, pushes another job to Argo, so it's, it's possible to switch that logic around if you want. So that's it on the work avoidance side. Moving into testing, um, we have a few just basic lint um, tips for you. Um, the, the handy thing with Argo is you can then use any sort of YAML linter. For us, um, we recommend YAML lint, prettier, and then using mega linter to incorporate everything, all your languages into one linter that runs on every PR. Um, that works great for us. Um, the other thing to not forget is you have the Argo CLI's lint command, so make sure to run that. We run it um, early on in every pipeline to make sure we can pick up on any syntax errors that aren't covered by, you know, basic YAML linter. And then finally, there is a concept of, you know, taking a look at each step in your pipeline. And if, if you have a certain set of predictable outputs, consider testing for those. And that's a concept we, we call, you know, just asserting um, test cases for each step in your pipeline. It's, it's something we covered in an ArgoCon talk before by my colleague JP as well. Um, so check that out, CICD for data pipelines. And the concept is to, you know, say if you're expecting a certain file output or a certain data type output in a pipeline, for a CI use case, we're often just testing for file outputs and paths that we're expecting. Um, if for some reason those get messed up in dev, we want to know about that before we push our CI pipeline to production. So we include um, a workflow of workflows pattern to uh, test those workflow templates and ensure that if they were changed on that PR, we know, you know they're not changing the expected output. As far as migrating, if you're considering you know, moving from another CI tool to Argo workflows to, to build your full CI CD pipeline with the Argo projects, um, we have a few tips. First is don't, you don't have to migrate all at once, so run workflows alongside Jenkins. Um, that's what we did at first too, and you can trigger Argo workflows with Jenkins if you want. Um, we used it for new projects, new repos. New, we see customers maybe take a, a new team that's more cloud native and start testing out Argo workflows um, with that team as their CI tool and, and not having to move the entire company's CI over. We started with simple tasks. Testing is great because you can easily parallelize it um, on Kubernetes um, versus using Jenkins previously. So that's something that we often recommend um, people start you know, using Argo for. And then the, the third thing we recommend is using workflow templates so that as you're building, you're not having to redo all that work over and over again for each CI pipeline. Start thinking of your templates as a library that you'll eventually give to developers to self-serve from, and that'll make your life a lot easier down the adoption journey. And lastly, we, you know, in the process of migrating CI and scaling up your CI, there are tools that can help speed things up as you're going to Kubernetes and using Argo for uh, CI pipelines. BuildKit is one that we really recommend for builds, and it works great with Argo. And then Spagel was the other one I mentioned earlier. And that was for image caching. And finally, a little bit about PipeKit. So we're, as I mentioned, maintainers on the Workflows project, also on the Helm project, and we're here to help um, anyone in the community with questions getting on um, to Argo, migrating to Argo workflows um, from a tool like Jenkins or Airflow. Um, and we just help you save engineering time and cloud spend in the process. And we either do that through our control plane for Argo workflows if you want a self-serve experience, or we provide you know, a team that can be in your Slack and answer questions anytime you need it. As far as next steps, again, there's this free repo and resource we can give you. Um, so definitely check that out on GitHub. You can pull that down if the internet permits. I had a lot of trouble <laughs> earlier today with my demo trying to do that live. So um, maybe pull it down, yeah, when everybody else is not trying to pull it down, but you know, back at the hotel or something, and you can play around with it, um, deploy it locally or, or on a cluster, a dev cluster you might have. Yeah, Hand it to you. Um, yeah, like you, you can also like come and meet like the um, um, maintainers of Argo CD and uh, Argo rollouts. Uh, Intuit is a contributor, and uh, I think uh, Zach and Michael are leads on, on those respecting things. So come meet us at the Argo booth, and we'll, uh, we'll chat. Yeah, we'll be there as well um, from the workflows and Helm side. So hope to see you there tomorrow at the 
uh, exhibitor expo downstairs. And if you want to chat with us further about your use cases, happy to meet up this week. Thanks a lot. Thanks everyone.